Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Game Esoterica and our continuing series on a technicality where we take a look at repairing some stuff. And today what we're going to be doing is a CHD Man tutorial about how to restore arcade games that originally use hard drives because they love to die, they are quite fragile, and they're running constantly in arcades. And you guys have been asking a lot about this. So what we're going to do today is restore a Crypt Killer Konami arcade PCB with CHD Man. Before we get too far involved, though, if you give me a huge favor, go down below and hit like, subscribe, and that notification bell it definitely helps us out. And if you feel so inclined and you want to support the channel, we have a Patreon link down there as well. But the interesting thing about this Konami PCB is it's just a more powerful PlayStation. It's a PlayStation 1 with extra RAM. That's all the difference is to it. But the issue is it shipped with a SCSI hard drive, which is dead. But if we compare the two, the only difference, and my little new cat pen, my wife bought it for me, it's my new pointer, so get used to it, is that a PlayStation 1 uses optical discs where this uses a SCSI hard drive. And hard drives in arcade settings weren't that strange, but otherwise a little bit of extra program and sound RAM as well as video RAM, but it is just a PlayStation 1 on a PCB. And it's the only time Konami used this particular design for an arcade game. And that's the really interesting thing, and that's why I want to restore this, because Crypt Killer is a great game. I love my arcade light gun games, and to get this thing back up and running would be great. But you'll see here, it's just got the Sony chips on board, and then it has a whole host of other different chips. And I know this is a tutorial on CHD, man, but you can't blame me for trying to just kind of tour you guys around this board. If you want this, the tutorial, skip ahead like a minute but other than some sound program ROMs so that they play back without having to access the hard drive and some additional sound hardware from Konami it's basically just a bog standard PlayStation 1 but the issue with arcade games and hard drives is they constantly fail and you'll see here this is the original SCSI hard drive that came with the unit and now you can't hear it on camera because I put music behind this if you pick this up and rattle it there is damage in there. You can hear the read heads just wiggling around. So this hard drive is never able to be fixed. But if we take a look on the back here, you're going to see we have a SCSI array. It's a 40 pin plus an 8 pin, and two of those pins are missing. SCSI hard drives are notoriously weird. There's so many different connectors. So we need to find a device that's going to allow us to adapt this hard drive over to something solid state so we can flash a new image from CHD Man. What are we going to use for that? Well, you'll see in just a moment here. It's a SCSI to SD adapter, and this is the two and a half inch drive version that has a two millimeter pin pitch. All this does is emulate a SCSI hard drive from a micro SD cable. That chip in the middle is going to convert all the different micro SD commands into something that this board can understand, i.e. SCSI. The thing is though, there are a couple extra pins on here and we do need to deal with that because arcade games that had hard drives loved slightly wiggling the standard around to accommodate them. So this is how to fix a Crypt Killer arcade PCB or how to use CHD Man for anything you need. But all we're going to do is mirror the contents of this hard drive from the CHD file onto that SCSI to SD card adapter and we're going to deal with those extra pins that are sitting there. Now anytime you're restoring an arcade PCB that used a hard drive, you want to try to use the original ribbon cable. You can change them, but they always love to do something strange with these. And on the Crypt Killer, you'll see here I marked one end as PCB and one end as drive because there were tabs in two of the pins, pin 41 and 42. I dug them out and there were no actual pins inside of them, but if you do find pins on a new ribbon cable that you do not need, you can just use a small drill and drill them out. Don't go too crazy, but you just want to damage them to make sure they're not connected to anything because we need to make sure the wiring is identical to restore this as well after we use CHD man. And the best rule of thumb is if you're missing a pin on the cable or the drive, just use a multimeter and probe the board out. Because pin 41 and pin 42 on this board do not have continuity with anywhere else. So even though I've removed those pins, technically I don't really have to. Now the other thing is when you're dealing with these ribbon cables and pins on our hold arcade boards, you want to be very careful. The pins are delicate, things are notched, everything should go in easily, but definitely make sure that you're paying attention because there's no point in restoring a hard drive from a CHD file if you bend or break a pin off. You'll destroy the board or you'll have to deal with the repairs on that. So just always be careful when we're actually converting it over because these are expensive devices and you don't want to make a mistake. But you'll see here, I've already flashed the card and we'll get into the tutorial in just a moment. I just connect these where that original SCSI drive would go. And since I don't have standoffs quite yet, I just use the anti-static bag it came in to make sure that board doesn't ground out with anything. But now we've replaced the SCSI hard drive with a solid state adapter and we can test. 
But the question really is for the tutorial, how do we get the contents of a hard drive over to a micro SD card? And that's where our friend CHD man is going to come into play. It's a super useful program for both arcade to disc CDs and DVDs as well as hard drives. So taking a look at my computer here, you're going to see I have the CHD file for Crypt Killer and it's zipped. I can't tell you where these come from, but if you know how to use Google, trust me, you can find them easily. If you're watching this tutorial and want to try this, clearly you know how to use Google. But as we unzip that here, we're going to see that we have the CHD file. That just means compressed hunks of data. It's a custom compression algorithm that is working for MAME but that's what we're going to be using to reflash this. There's two versions that I use, version 140 or 146. Some work for some arcade-based hard drive games and some work for others. For Crypt Killer, I use 146. If you're doing Killer Instinct, I believe it's 140. So there's not a ton of arcade games that run off hard drives, but there's some. Now, CHD man is a DOS prompt command, and we need to run the command prompt as administrator. If you don't pick it as administrator, this will not function whatsoever. So make sure you do that. Now, if you are rusty on your DOS commands or you didn't grow up using DOS, I did, we need to navigate to where CHD man is because it is folder sensitive. So I keep everything as far as you know, my work files on my iDrive. So I just navigate over there, and if you need to see the directory, it's DIR. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch over folder to folder. First, I'm gonna get into unported three ROMs. That's just where I put some of my ROM files. So you just do CD space unported, whatever your drive directory is, is what you're gonna do. And then I'll keep changing the directory until I get into version 146, V146. CD is just how you change things. If I hit dir or directory again, you're gonna see I have CHD man, the program we're gonna use, and then I have the compressed hunks of data file for Crypt Killer. These are the only two things I need to get ready to restore the drive. If you type in CHD man and hit enter, you're going to get a list of all of the different commands that we have available for CHD files. And we're going to be using extract hard drive because that's what we need to do. Now, I do want to warn you, you can irreparably damage hard drives on your system using this program. I'm not joking around. You tell it what drive to flash and it's just going to do it. You'll see here we have CHD man, extract HD, space, negative I, that's the input file, and then you just type the name of your CHD file. It is case sensitive. Whatever you see is what you type down here. Now we're going to basically say the additional things we wanted to do with this file. Negative O is the output. That's where we're going to be putting the file. Then we need two backslashes, a period, and a backslash. Now we need to tell it what physical drive we are flashing the CHD hard drive image to. And this is what I can't stress enough. You put in whatever number the drive is that you're trying to flash. It is not going to ask you if you're sure or if you're extra sure. Once you hit the enter button, it will flash that drive. I don't have a USB drive hooked up yet. So if I said flash disk four, it's going to overwrite my RAID drive. That's almost two terabytes of backed up data. Do not make a mistake when you give it the number. You cannot stop it. Once you hit enter, you're done. You'll see here now I have a USB drive attached. You can use any USB reader so long as it applies. And you'll see it's disk five. So if you want to write to a USB disk, if you want to write to a compact flash card, an SD card, you're going to type in physical drive and you're going to tell it what number you want. In this instance, it's five. Then you sit in negative F. I'm not going to hit enter because I already have the card, but if you hit enter here, it's going to take the Crypt Killer CHD file and it's going to unpack it and flash it to drive five. Double check, triple check, quadruple check because I cannot tell you how serious I am. You can format the wrong hard drive. If for any reason you get an error, that's going to be because there's more than one partition on the drive you're trying to flash. I will leave the link to this tutorial below. I didn't have to clean the card, but if you use disk part, you can erase all the partitions on a card and just leave it as a single partition unformatted card. That's what CHD man needs to use. But again, I will leave these links below, but just again, remember, be careful when you're using this because you can also just erase the partitions on a drive that you don't want to. But now that we have that CHD image flashed onto the micro SD card, you'll see here, everything is hooked up. It's just on my floor because this is my testing area. But as I turn on Crypt Killer with the SCSI to SD adapter in the board with that micro SD card we flashed from CHD man, we're going to get the media diagnosis. It's just reading the file, making sure everything is good, it works perfectly fine. And then it's going to go ahead into launching the program. And just so you guys get a close up, you'll see it here as well. 
Now you can use CHD Man to extract a hard drive image from any arcade game that used a hard drive. NBA Jam, no not NBA Jam, NFL Blitz used it a lot. Killer Instinct is one of the most common ones. This is a special instance because not a lot of things use SCSI. IDE to solid state is going to be a lot easier to use. So if you're trying to restore a board that uses a hard drive, just Google whatever type of drive it is, IDE to compact flash or solid state. But you'll see here, Crypt Killer is running and we restored it using CHD Man. If you guys have any questions or comments, leave them down below. I'll love chatting with you. But we will be back eventually with another tutorial in this series. Like I said before, if you could do me a huge favor, go down below, hit like, subscribe, and your notification bell definitely helps us out. Otherwise, we'll be back with a bunch more videos all week. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.